Thank you very much. Maybe I should start by expressing profound gratitude to His Excellency the President, uh, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, uh, President uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and all the people that God has used to make him take this decision. Uh, in the last eight years, Customs has gone through a period of uh, transition. Uh, some progress has been made. Uh, we made remarkable progress in uh, e-customs. Uh, we made a lot of breakthrough in capacity building. But then, customs can still live to its full potentials. You know, when we bring in some kind of innovations to drive customs operations. So these are the kind of things we'll be looking forward to in the years ahead. And I've gotten the assurance of the president through the vice president who just uh, did this ceremony. Uh, well, the expectations that we have is that. Uh, uh, we are going to be professional in our approach. Uh, there are a number of uh, partners, stakeholders that we are going to be working with. It's a very onerous task for the customs, but we believe that we will be working alongside other stakeholders, uh, other partners uh, that we have identified who yearn to work with us, uh, who felt that they've not been given enough uh, uh, enough say in customs matters, customs operations. So we intend to come up with a number of innovations that would help to uh, carry along uh, those stakeholders, those partners. Uh, we're going to leverage technology. We're going to try and use those innovative technologies to break new grants in customs operations. Thank you. This is your Lagos. The template we are following in terms of uh, crime management, I would say with all sense of uh, responsibility, is the legacy that you have left in your capacity as a DC operations in this state. There is no way, I think the heart of policing in Lagos is all about operations. And there is no way or let me say it will take a long while before that framework of operational components of policing can be altered from the foundation you have uh, laid. And uh, the good thing also is that the staff you left behind in terms of uh, those driving the operational competence of the state, they are still the same operational officers that are driving the operational activities of these states, and they are doing it with excellence. The same thing goes for the DPOs. You have seated here officers that can de describe with total confidence as the best that you can wish for in any part of, the, of uh, this country in terms of their knowledge, resilience, understanding of the dynamics of policing, as well as commitment to their duties. You have the best seated here. Uh, yeah, I just said. And with their support, we have been able over the recent months 
to stabilize the internal security order of Lagos State. This, I can assure you, will be sustained. We have challenges in terms of crime management. And what are those challenges? Basically, today, the highest or the prevalent crimes that we are struggling to grapple with has got to do with two critical areas, uh, three critical areas. The first is cultism. The second has to do with high trafficking in uh, firearms. And the third has to do with gender and uh, domestic uh, violence. Having identified and prioritized these crimes, we have introduced certain strategies towards addressing them. In relation to, um, in relation to cultism, we have re-engineered our response architecture by setting up tactical units, particularly those that were initially based at the headquarters. We decentralized their operations, gave them a new orientation, task them, and send them to area commands that are most challenged by this threat. And through these efforts, they've been able to effectively coordinate with the area commanders and the DPOs to impact massively on the rates and consequences of cultism in the state. So that between February to now, we have arrested not less than 120 cultists and recovered not less than 60 firearms of different descriptions linked to these cultists. We have paraded constantly, we do parade constantly those arrested so as to make a clear statement that the command under our common watch will not sit back and allow misguided elements hiding under the umbrella of cultism to threaten the internal security peace in this state, the internal security order in this state. And we are going to sustain this until they choose to either renounce cultism or to vacate the state. In relation to firearms, it is of concern because it is virtually on a daily basis that officers on patrol recover firearms, locally fabricated, foreign. And I think it has gotten to a stage where that menace has to be made. The discourse around that menace must be mainstreamed. What are the sources of these firearms? Is, that, is it that Lagos states, because of our association with some neighboring states and the uh, borderline, is it that we are having issues with our border management and border security system such that these weapons can be easily smuggled in? Is it that there are networks within Lagos or within the states, the states are adjoining uh, Lagos that act as source of a uh, supply? So our approach is not just to mop up these firearms. Our approach is also to get to the depth of the sources of these arms. And all the DPOs, the tactical commands, have been charged to do that. Because it is only by getting to the roots that we can effectively say that we have cracked uh, such, uh, such crimes. In relation to gender violence, what we are trying to do is to re-engineer our um, gender unit in collaboration with the Office of the First Lady, the uh, Sexual uh, Violence uh, Unit of Lagos State uh, Command, NGOs, and some other uh, strategic stakeholders. And so far, we have initiated a remodeling effort that we give a more befitting uh, space for them. They have trained more men, 
uh, more personnel to man this uh, facility so that they can have the capacity to effectively respond to these threats. In so doing, sir, we'll be requiring your fatherly support. We have issues of logistics. I know ordinarily the AIG may say this is beyond him. I may wish to disagree that it's beyond you. Why? Because you have a network already entrenched in this state. You also have, as our AIG, a relationship with the force headquarters. We'll appeal that the position, the peculiar requirements of Lagos State be articulated and specially presented to the new leadership of the force. So that once this is done, I am sure with the respect you have within the system, your position will be taken seriously. And I want to believe strongly that the Inspector General of Police, whom I know you have, has a very strong regards for your capacity, will take your position, your recommendation seriously. We have vehicles already parked at uh, Police College. We are the ones protecting them. It is only natural and fair that we pay back, we will be paid back through the allocation of some of these vehicles to support our operational needs in Lagos State. This I believe we can do. Um, other than this, we have need for training. As often said, you cannot give what you do not have. The officers may be knowledgeable in terms of operational competence, but crime is very dynamic. D uh, digitalization of the system, including ICT, automation of the system, has completely changed the dynamics of crime. It has also put additional pressure on police in terms of the nature of investigation, as well as the need for digital and forensic evidence to advance prosecution. These are areas we need capacity building. And if the AIG can draw on his goodwill, his network within Lagos State and beyond to support the command in organizing tailor-made training programs towards enhancing our capacity, it will really assist us and I'll be willing to work with the, and if the AIG, who I know is very comfortable in his own right, can also fund some of this for us, we'll be eternally grateful. The officers and men of Labor State Command, like you have heard from the CP, are doing exceedingly very, very well. But, for every situation, there's always room for improvement. And I believe if we all stand tall and say, yes, we can do it and ensure that this state is rid up of criminals, you will see Lagos definitely will be crime free, if not totally crime free. But to a reasonable extent, people will go about their businesses without being hurt or otherwise. And that is the kind of Lagos that I want all of us to be quick for the junior ones that are coming in. On that note, for us in Lagos State, we are always proactive. Let me say so. We don't believe in reactive policing. And that is why you see officers and men of this command, whether on uniform or in mufti, moving around, nose diving, to get information about happenings. And don't forget, our men are scattered all over. We are also networking with members of the public that will have 
one or two information about the movement of these uh, monsters to our breast us. That is not enough. We are also synergizing with other security agencies like you are aware, realizing, of course, the fact that globally no one does it alone without partnership, and that we are doing. So by the special grace of God, before any terrorist will raise up his head to commit any havoc here in Lagos, trust me, we would have gotten that information and nipped the problem rightly in the book. Thank you. Everything we are doing in Nigerian police force today is revolves basically around discipline. Unfortunately, very, very unfortunate as it were, today, to a large extent, discipline has been eroded. Somebody may ask, why? The reason is, not far fit. Some of us are responsible, if I may say, because I cannot say all of us, because quite a number of us here are well disciplined. Growing up as a young cadet officer in those days, when some of us joined this job, Constable has respect for the corporal, corporal to sergeant, and it goes that way. But today, it is a sordid situation. This is because of the attitude of some of us. We need to have a change of attitude, in other words, a reorientation or attitudinal change. Otherwise, you wake up one day, you have a collapse force. You can't give directive to your junior to obey you. Is that the kind of police that we want to leave behind and be quit for the junior ones coming? The answer is no. For me, I believe, as management officers that are all seated here, we all have that responsibility to ensure that the needful is done. When a junior one commits an offense, you go through the books. Everything you need to discipline that person is there. You don't need to ask questions. So we have to key into the IGP's agenda and ensure that we enforce discipline to the latter. Okay. Yes, uh, members of the press, I've just been whispered to, and uh, principally, all that I'm supposed to discuss here is basically with the officers. For the press, 